Welcome back to pattern recognition. So today we want to look a bit more into optimization and the topic today will be looking into the actual update direction. So we've seen the gradient descent methods in the previous video and today we want to have a couple of thoughts in how to pick the particular update direction. So these are these kind of steepest descent methods and the, even the normalized ones, we might want to consider what update direction we actually want to choose. And what we actually want to get is the largest decrease in the linear approximation of F. And technically we could also constrain this gradient direction by a unit ball of an LP norm. So here we would then search for the update direction as the minimum over some u that has a length of one according to our norm and then the projection of the gradient onto this norm. So we observe that if we do this kind of optimization for selecting the update direction, then the steepest direction might not be simply the negative gradient direction, but it may depend on the chosen norm. So the negative gradient is not necessarily the best choice for the search direction. So let's look into a bit of ideas how to perform this. And here we want to think about some linear ideas and we consider now the first order Taylor approximation of f of x plus u. And if we want to look at that, in the selected position x, then we can approximate f of x plus u as f of x plus the gradient of f of x in a product with this unit ball u. So here this inner product of the gradient and the unit ball is the directional derivative of x in direction u. So the vector u denotes a descent direction if the inner product with the gradient vector is negative, which means that we have this inner product smaller than zero. Now this gives then rise to a new steepest descent method. We again have the function, we have the initial estimate, but now we also have a norm. And we initialize with k to zero. And the first thing that we do is we compute the update direction. So here it's not just the negative gradient, but we compute the steepest descent according to our norm. Then we do the 1D line search and we update with the appropriate fit and then we iterate until we are converged. So there's only little change in X. Now let's have a look at different norms. Let's look at the unit ball for the L2 norm. So here we have indicated the negative gradient direction. This is our unit ball. And now we are looking for essentially all of the directions u. And we seek the direction u that has essentially the largest projection of our negative gradient direction onto u. And if we think about that, you can see, well, it is exactly the negative gradient direction. So for the case of the L2 norm, our statement that the negative gradient direction is the direction of steepest descent is actually true. Now let's consider other norms and we'll start with the L1 norm. Now in the L1 norm, we have a different unit ball. Our unit ball looks like this. Now again, we vary u over all of the boundaries of our unit ball. And now we look for the direction that produces the maximum projection of the negative gradient onto our unit ball and we see it lies here. So this is the longest projection of our negative gradient direction onto the unit ball of the L1 norm. So this is interesting because we essentially end up exactly with one of the coordinate axes. Now let's look into a second example. And here we see if the negative gradient direction would be in this direction, again, we end up 
with exactly a projection onto one of our coordinate axes. So actually the steepest descent for the L1 norm selects in each iteration the component of our gradient with the maximum absolute value and then decreases or increases dependent on the sign of the each selected component in that direction. So if you define i to be the index of the gradient component with maximum absolute value, then we can find some base vectors e i in our d-dimensional space that corresponds to this coordinate system and then the steepest descent direction is simply given as the minimization over u as we've seen previously with respect to the L1 norm and this then turns out to be simply the sign of the derivative of the function with respect to exactly this coordinate. So this essentially means that steepest gradient descent using the L1 norm results in coordinate descent. So coordinate descent is essentially minimizing according to the L1 norm. What happens if we take other norms? Let's look at the maximum norm. So here the unit ball looks like this. And now let's think about the direction of maximum projection and you'll find it here. So this is the longest projection of our negative gradient direction. Let's look into another example. It will be here. So if we look into maximum norms, then we will find update directions that essentially combine several coordinates, which will result, of course, in a different update behavior. Now, we also introduced P norms, so where we have a norm that is essentially described by a matrix. For example, this could be a covariance matrix of a given distribution. And if we do this, then we generally have unit balls of this ellipsoidal shape. And if we want to do this then, then you will see that the maximum projection will be along this direction here. So this will be our update direction. So the major axis of the ellipsoid is crucial for selecting the correct update direction. Now let's look into this in some more detail and then you see that we still use the same idea for finding the minimum. So we take the update direction as the minimum overview as the inner product of our gradient direction with u, but now we are following an LP norm. Now this LP norm we can expand to u transpose p u to the power of one half. So we need to take the square root of this scalar value. And we can rearrange this again then into, as we've seen also previously in this lecture, that we can essentially take a decomposition of p. And with this we can then use p to the power of 0.5 times u and the 2 norm. So if we look at this, we can see that these kind of changes in u, we could technically also use as a feature transform. So let's think about this as a feature transform as an LDA. And now we transform into a different space where we take this P1 over 2 as a transformation matrix to go into some new space U prime. So this would be spherical data in which everything is then determined by the L2 norm. If we do so, we can see that we can rewrite f of u as f of p now inverse of the 1 over 2 p matrix times u prime. And then we can find a new definition of f prime that is essentially containing this transform of the features. And this gives us f prime and u prime. Now we can think about how to minimize the direction in that particular transformed space. And if we do so, then we now minimize f prime x prime according to the L2 norm. So if we think about this, then we can see that this is nothing else than the negative gradient direction of f prime x prime. So we know that in the 2 norm, we essentially just have the negative gradient direction. So we can reuse this result. And now that we're here, we can substitute back. So we get our f prime 
and our x prime replaced. If we do so, we see this is a gradient, so we also have to apply the chain rule, which then gives us our minus 1 over 2 times the gradient and the transformed 1 over 2. Now let's also replace our x prime. This will cancel out the inner transform. So here we then have minus p 1 over 2 inverse times the gradient position at x. Now let's see what happens if we apply this to find our update direction delta x. And here again we need to apply the p to the minus 1 over 2 and we apply our update direction x prime. That is what we already found on the previous slide. So we just plug it in here. And then you see that we have essentially two times our p to the minus 1 over 2. And this means we can simplify this entire term to minus p inverse times the gradient direction. So the conclusion is the steepest descent direction in LP norm is given as the inverse of the p times the gradient direction times minus 1. So now we've seen different norms. Let's look into one more idea in order to perform updates. And this is Newton's method. So the idea here is that you select a point and then you compute the minimum of the second order Taylor approximation. Here you see that we have this point. Then we essentially compute the second order Taylor approximation and find the minimum. We take this point again, take the second order Taylor approximation and take the minimum again and so on until we actually find the actual minimum. So remember the second order Taylor approximation is given by f of x plus the gradient of f of x transpose delta x plus 1 over 2 and now this quadratic term where we have delta x transpose times the Hessian matrix times delta x. Now what we want to do is we want to select our update direction such that we essentially get the minimum gradient position. So we need to compute the gradient of our approximation. So let's do that. Then you see that the terms that are not associated to delta x, they just cancel out. And we can now see that we essentially get the gradient at f of x plus the Hessian matrix times delta x equals zero. And this means we can solve simply. And here you see that we get the gradient direction times the inverse of the Hessian matrix and multiplied with minus one. So now let's look at some conclusions. Newton's method is an x-dependent steepest descent method regarding the LP norm where P is simply the Hessian matrix. So this is also a pretty nice observation, isn't it? In total, this brings us then to the Dampton Newton's method. So here we input a function f, an initial estimate of x0, and then we start again with k equals to 0. We compute the Newton step. So here we need the Hessian matrix inverted at the position xk, and then we multiply it with the gradient at xk and multiply it with minus 1. So this is the update direction. Then we do our line search and we can compute the update and we iterate until we have only small changes. So I think, I hope you learned some lessons here. So we've seen that we can use different norms for selecting the update direction. Depending on the norm, we get a different update direction. If we take the two norm, it's the negative gradient direction. If we take other norms, we have to change the update direction. And if we look into Newton's method, we essentially have the update using a P norm where P is given by the Hessian matrix. So this is a very nice observation. And with this, then we can apply different kinds of decent methods. And they are very useful if you want to work on the remaining optimization problems in this class. And of course, you should be aware of the relations of the different optimizers that we discussed here. And these are 
quite crucial observations and I would really have a look at those, not just for the exam, but I think it's also relevant for your future career if you want to work in machine learning or pattern recognition, then you have to be very familiar with these methods. So next time in pattern recognition, we want to start looking into a really nice method for pattern classification that is the so-called support vector machine. So I also have some further readings. Again, the book by Boyd and Vandenberger, Convex Optimization, really a very good book. I can recommend that to everybody. And also numerical optimization is a very good one. I also prepared some comprehensive questions that may help you in the exam preparation. And with this, I can only say, I hope you enjoyed this little video and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.